All right, so, so far we've talked about arrogance and... Mm -hmm. um, so maybe I should write these down one at a time. So there was arrogance. And a facade. Yeah, or which we called the false ego. Yeah. Yep. What would be next on your list? Um, well, I, I, there's so I have, many, isn't yes, there? Yes, like, I have one on the list that yeah, we can sure. bring up. Um, uh, judgment and criticism, okay. which I think is an interesting one that perhaps we don't always associate with the lack of humility. Is there an E in there? Probably not. Yes. Oh, no, no. there's not. I see, I can't spell either. Both you and I have. <laughs> Maybe it depends what continent you live on as well. Yeah. yeah. Judgment and criticism. Yeah. yeah, these are very similar to arrogance, actually, in a lot of ways. Um, how, how would you define judgment for us? Well, again, judgment is an emotion that's coming out of me. So we know it's not anything to do with what I'm saying. I can be telling the truth in a loving way mm -hmm. or I can tell the truth in a judgmental way. Mm -hmm. So in a, if it's in a judgmental way, I have an emotion coming out of me towards the other person that I am superior to them, mm -hmm. that I know better than they do, and so forth when I'm in a judgmental way. And in fact, it's, a judgment is a lot about worth, my opinion, of the other person's worth. Mm -hmm. So when I am in a state where I am judging, I have a strong opinion inside of myself that the, I am more worthy than the other person. Yeah. On, and it might be on just a particular issue, um, but it could be on a whole group of issues. And sometimes it's on a group you know, where I believe that it's everything to do with my being is more worthy than, than somebody else's. Now, this, it's an emotion where that is a projection at the other person, which is quite a damaging projection. It's belittling, condescending. It, it, it's, uh, it causes us to have an obnoxious viewpoint towards other people. It's, uh, it, it, it creates a sense in them that they are lesser or it, it attempts to create a sense in another person that they are lesser than I, I, I am. And it, it allows me to maintain a sense of personal superiority. Mm -hmm. So in other words, I, I, by judging you, I can make, maintain a sense that I'm better than you. And, uh, and judgment, of course, has huge problems when it comes to humility, of course. So, so that's certainly the case. Mm. And criticism is closely aligned in that uh, many times we, and, and, and again, we've got to be careful, criticism is an emotion. Mm. It's not a statement. Mm -hmm. so you see, if, if I can make a statement of truth, right? Um, the statement of truth can be, you know, completely like, for example, do you like, do you like these flowers? And uh, and my feeling is, yeah, I love those flowers. A lot of them look like Australian natives, and uh, you know, they many of them appeal to me colour-wise and everything. Uh, are they dying? Yes, <laughs> yes, they are dying. They've been cut and they're dying, right? Um, and I don't understand why people want to cut, to be frank, cut flowers, um, because they immediately begin dying, honestly. Um, so, you know, I'd much rather see them alive for a long period of time. Now, my statement that they're dying is not a judgment or a criticism. Mm -hmm. It is just a statement of truth. It mm -hmm. is dying. And, uh, but, but somebody could take that to be a statement of judgment or criticism. Mm -hmm. So, so in other words, if they gave me the flowers and they were a nice, bright bunch, and I said, you've given me a heap of dying things now, right, which is a statement of truth, they might take that as a rejection of their gift, yes. right, which, which they have now taken as a criticism, even though I don't mean it to be such. It's just a statement of truth. So it depends upon the giver, and this is where it's very, very difficult for most people to determine judgment and criticism mm -hmm. because most people feel criticised or judged even when you're just stating the truth. Yes. So this is not what I'm speaking of. I'm not speaking of when we're just stating the truth without any emotional intention behind it. What I'm speaking of with judgment and criticism is, is a desire to make the other person feel something as a result of the statement. Right? 
which is a very different condition. If I, so if I just saying, oh, they're, they're dying, you know, and it's just a statement of truth, well, that's a statement of truth. But if I'm saying, I'm pointing out to you that they're dying because I want to criticise that you cut them, mm-hmm. right? And I want to actually make you feel bad about cutting them. Or, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? Rather than just examine the truth about why, why you cut them, then um, I'm straight away now involved in a feeling of judgment mm-hmm. from myself. And it's a feeling that comes out of me. Yeah. Not, and, and unfortunately, most people are not very sensitive to feelings, and so they don't know when the feeling is coming out of a person when they're just stating the truth. Yes. Right? Um, so, you know, this is a, a sort of a muddies the waters a bit when it comes to this emotion. It into, does, doesn't it? Yeah. And it's, uh, sometimes it feels like you can have a, a, what appears to be a subtle um, exchange with someone that can be laden with judgment, can't it? It can be um, ov- overt or it can be very underhanded, but in both cases I'm assuming you're talking about the emotion that's coming in. Yes, we see the underhanded judgments uh, very much occurring in families, but also in society, these underhanded judgments. So, so for example, um, we've had many things written about us right now, and, and, and one of the judgments is that, is that we're a cult. Mm-hmm. Right? Now, it's not a statement of truth, for example. You and I don't lead anything. We live in our own property. We, we don't have anybody living with us. We don't monitor anybody's life to see whether they're practising the principles of divine truth that we teach. We don't attack them if they aren't. We don't, you know, we don't give them all of this, you know, lovely feelings when they are. We don't <laughs> and threaten them. We don't and, threaten them yeah. with the removal of our love. The only times that we remove, remove ourselves from spending time with a person is when they have been unloving to us. So, you know, we, we have no levels of control whatsoever. And anybody who comes to visit us pretty much sees that. But if you look at what the media does, the word cult has a connotation. So it's not just a statement of truth for the media. Mm-hmm. It's actually a way to give an impression to a reader Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's a purposeful manipulation of the truth. A judgment is like this. A purposeful manipulation of the truth to inflame an emotion Mm. in the reader in this case. Mm -hmm. For for example, in many um, newspaper articles, I'm referred to as Miller, right? In other words, uh, I don't even uh, have the respect enough of the person who's writing the article to use my first name. I'm never usually called Mr Miller or or Mr Alan John Miller or whatever, but rather I'm just called Miller, you know, like... And this is another judgment coming out of them. So the statement of my name is just a statement of truth. My last name happens to be Miller, right? But the attitude coming out of them is I do not deserve any sense, form of respect, which is how they feel. Mm-hmm. And that's how they treat me when they interview me, and that's exactly how they feel. And so the, the emotion coming out of them is an emotion of judgment coming out of them. And it helps a person maintain their own arrogance, their own position. It helps them maintain the feeling that they are superior. You know, so, so they feel then the right to pull down another. So, so the new, the, and people that we've met in the media thus far, and I'm not saying that all people in the media are potentially like that, but we haven't met anybody that isn't at this point, but they have this strong desire to pull down mm-hmm. all the time. To, and, and in fact, we see this happening with other people all the time. And then, and then, of course, they write these big articles pulling down something, but when they're proven to be false and they've been sued or something like that for being false, they write this little tiny correction in the, you know, in the 28th page of the paper that nobody can see yes. when they spent the whole front page pulling down the person. Um, and this is an indication of their underlying desire. Their underlying desire is one, to judge, but not to tell the truth. Mm-hmm. And, and a person who has a desire to tell the truth would tell the truth whether they were happy about the truth or not. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, so, you know, if, if a person came and examined our lives, they'd see that we don't rip people off, we don't impose our feelings upon them, we don't, you know, do any of those things. And while they personally might be unhappy about that because it makes their, their story a lot less flamboyant and, and, uh, and a lot less, you know, inflammatory, um, they would still be happy to tell the truth. Yeah. 
and the reality is that's what judgment does. Judgment helps us avoid the truth. Mm -hmm. Judgment is a great way to to step away from truth, to to get away with actions that are very, very damaging to society and individuals just because we want to maintain a position of falsehood most of the time. Right, because my next question was what what makes us judge it? not just judge others but judge ourselves i see many people have an issue with judgment and criticism of self so what drives us to this injury well have, have, as for all of these injuries most of them began in our childhood in some way mm-hmm. so um you know and it can be a combination of things that that gathered in our childhood that caused us to begin to judge others Sometimes a family has this perception that their family is the best family. And then because they maintain this perception with their children, they actually inculcate into their children this concept that our family is better than any other family and our beliefs are better than anybody else's beliefs and the way we live our life is better than any, the way anybody else lives their life. That makes us better people, mm-hmm. right? There's this underlying feeling that, that is present. Now, this underlying feeling builds in the child and and they begin to then act upon this underlying feeling that they are better than other people. And, of course, they will not avoid judging other people as a result. Mm -hmm. The other part, the other thing that causes judgment is almost the entire opposite uh, set of circumstances in our childhood, Mm -hmm. which is a, a, a set of circumstances where other people have judged us in our childhood and criticised us and pulled us down and denigrated us and, and treated us badly. And then this causes us to have sort of like this rebellious attitude towards their judgement by judging them in return, by, by having a kickback reaction to their judgement. And so we grow up uh, actually judging the things that are inside of ourselves mm. uh, as a result. In addition, in our childhood, we were often judged uh, whenever we expressed an emotion. Mm-hmm. So whenever we expressed an emotion that was out of harmony with the family or society viewpoint that was surrounding us at the time, we are immediately attacked. And so judgment actually comes from a, a large degree of fear inside of us about attack, mm. personal attack upon ourselves. When we are attacking another, we get away from being attacked ourselves. And if we, as a group, attack another... Mm-hmm. we have a large degree of acceptance in the group mm-hmm. towards ourselves not being attacked. Mm-hmm. And so often judgment comes from a deep underlying fear of actually our own attack, our own lack of safety, our own lack of security. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you see this happening all the time in the world too, where eventually judgment turns into um, war eventually. Yeah. You know, and all through the Dark Ages, judgment turned into religious persecution, yeah. for example, because eventually they they turned around into this viewpoint that that I because I now judged you, I could now condemn you. Mm. So it's like I could now mete out justice, what I believed was my form of justice towards you. Mm. So so if if you happen to be speaking to spirits, and I heard you and I was a religious persecutor at the time, I would have condemned you as a witch and, and given you, you know, one way to test it mm-hmm. and the way would end up in your death mm. uh, if, you were, if you were innocent and if you weren't innocent, you'd be ki- killed anyway. Mm. <laughs> Not very much of a choice, no. um, but, but, you know, that, that would be the judgment that I met out. So once we actually get involved in judging another, we actually also get involved in condemning another and it's not very far from that before we will begin murdering others, mm. where we will actually be involved in harming physically other people. It's quite sobering. Yeah. And, um, yeah. <laughs> well, I suppose it, what we need to do is look at how it relates to humility. It, it's my next question. The whole reason why we're doing this is we are avoiding our own feelings about others attacking us. And we're avoiding our own feelings of superiority that we have over other people. And we're, in in the end, avoiding our own feelings of how lesser we feel, our own sense of worth. And so there's so many emotions that we're avoiding and and getting away with just by judging somebody. Yeah. 
All right, final question on this um, block. How does judgment relate to our seeing and speaking truth? Well, fear and truth are complete polar opposites. So fear is false expectations masquerading as truth, mm -hmm. right? Or you could say a false expectations appearing real. They are masquerading as truth. And truth is completely opposite. Truth is divine truth, absolute, unable to be modified. Now, judgment is a fear-based emotion. So while I'm in a state of maintaining a fear-based emotion, it's impossible for me to see truth. So this is what judgment also causes us to do. It causes us to not be able to see truth. Mm. Uh, so, so it's very, very damaging. Now, if we think about our relationship with God, we've got humility as the foundation of our relationship with God. F humility opens the door to truth. So if we're judging, we're closing the door to truth. So, so we might be praying to God, like, please give me more love. But while I'm judging my fellow man... I said in the first century, you might as well grab you know, a noose and put it around your neck and attach it to a great big heavy weight and throw it in the sea because that's really what you're doing. You're killing yourself mm. in terms of your own relationship with God. That's what you're doing by judging another person. You are actually causing the other person harm, but in addition, you're, you're causing your own soul to close to any truth. And when you cause your own soul to close to any truth, how can love ever enter? So if, if humility is the doorway to truth and truth is the doorway to love, then we were not even getting to the point of the truth mm -hmm. when we're in a state of judgment. Mm -hmm. We're already telling ourselves the lie. And so it's impossible for new truth to enter us and impossible for God's love to enter us while we're judging our fellow man mm -hmm. and, 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 and woman, of course. <laughs> so So... Judgment helps us avoid our own fear. It helps us stay away from the truth about how we feel. And it helps us avoid the personal responsibility for our own emotional response to what is happening. Mm. It helps us avoid all of those things. So, so it's like, it's anti-humility, yeah. this, uh, this, this judgment. We notice, as you and I talk about frequently, we notice many people who think they're on the divine love path judging other people so much. They, they have these terrible feelings that they feel towards people in the community or in the environment. And this is an indication of how much they do not understand the principles of humility. Yeah. Because if they understood the principles of humility, they'd be looking at themselves and going, wow, I just judged another person. Wow, I just judged another person. Wow, every time I'm judging these other persons, I am completely shut down to the truth. Completely. That's and and I see many people supposedly speaking truth, and yet they're in a state of judgment. Exactly. And as we've just described, so that, they are that totally shut down. The truth. Completely closed. <laughs> exactly. And what I find so sombering about judgment is is the as you um, pointed out is the quick progression into violence that can happen from yes. judgment. Yes. Yeah. And. Um, well, you, you were in your first century life. You were, you know. Many of the so-called friends that we have, uh, because of their judgment of you, treated you very badly, both while I was alive, but even worse when I passed. Mm -hmm. And many of those people, you know, acted like they were all loving, yeah. but you put them in a negative situation, immediately they resort to violence, and so much violence that they're prepared to even kill a person generally, yeah. or rape them, or, and lots of other uh, very unloving acts come from this underlying condition of judgment. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, men who judge women as being a slut or a whore will often revert to the rape of the same kind of a woman yeah. um, just, just because their emotion of judgment causes them to eventually revert to violence. To justify that situation. To justify it, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. thanks, babe. Um, all right.